What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Monday. Birds are chirping and stuff. And well, actually, probably not. Probably snowed in. D doesn't matter. But the Orange Minnesota Fighting Vikings are fixing to draft their quarterback of the future and potentially take a, a QB in the top 10 for the first time in franchise history. Will it be Drake May? Will it be Jaden Daniels? Will it be J.J. McCarthy? Will it be Michael Penix Jr.? Who knows? Who really knows? But uh, all signs point towards a general manager, Kwesi Dofa Mensa, ready to roll them bones. You got to know when to hold them. No way to. All right. So, yeah, Kwesi's going to be gambling and potentially moving on up in the drafts. That's why the Vikings acquired the number 23 overall pick. Uh, they do have that ammunition to go up and go get their guy. And, you know, the sweet spots could be two at Washington, although Washington reportedly doesn't seem so inclined to move. Well, also because they have their choice uh, of May, Daniels, uh, McCarthy, and Penix. Uh, three, the Patriots. That could be a, a spot as well. Four, Arizona. Five, with the Chargers. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, Vikings just got to get above the Giants. And also make sure that the Broncos don't leapfrog them uh, if this drags out into the top tens. But uh, like we said, the Patriots at three, you know, th there's already been conspiracies that, hey, maybe the Patriots signing K.J. Osborne to a little bit more cash than what was expected, helping the Vikings projected to get an extra third round compensatory pick. Maybe that was part and parcel of getting a deal done. And it, it certainly is possible that the Vikings have – have contingent deals in their back pocket. Like, hey, if the board breaks this way, hey, if the board breaks that way, blah, 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 uh, with the Patriots at three, with the Cardinals at four, with the Chargers at five. So, cert certainly could be that case. And uh, Patriots head coach Gerard Mayo, uh, you know, first-year head coach, former linebacker for the Patriots, the pride of University of Tennessee, Rocky Top. So he's taking over for Belichick. It's some big shoes to fill. But also, I feel like Belichick did him a favor for having very poop teams towards the end. So now it's just like, ah, we're ready for a fresh start. Who knows? But uh, Gerard Mayo knows that quarterback is extremely important. But uh, the Patriots, the Patriots need a lot of help. They, they certainly do. And he talked about the draft process uh, on uh, with uh, NFL.com at the uh, at the owners meetings. There you go. So uh, first up. But it appears it wouldn't be wise to make bold predictions as early as Patriots head coach Gerard Mayo to Alpha Network Steve Weish on Sunday at the annual league meeting. Just said that uh, that while quarterback is obviously obviously a focus for the team going into the draft, it's not a bygone conclusion that it's the only direction they could go with their first pick. Uh, it's the priority right now, Mayo said. But with that being said, you have to really be in love with the guy to take him at number three. So really, all the options are still open for us. And you know, it, it could be a spot too. Where hey maybe you know maybe the Patriots are really on in on Drake May or McCarthy or Daniels and maybe they go uh, number two to Washington you know maybe maybe the, that guy is Washington's cup of tea and all right so just just for example say, say that the Patriots are all in on Drake May he's their one one on their board and then there's a big gap between everyone else right and May goes number two to Washington all of a sudden. Do the Patriots just take a guy just to take a guy, or do they look into moving down? And this being one of the deeper quarterback classes in NFL history, uh, potentially they could get Penix or Nix or Rattler or Pratt, Pratt, Pratt a little bit later on. And may maybe the Vikings draft board is different. You know, like we said, maybe the Vikings are very equal with May, Daniels, and McCarthy, and maybe they want to get up to three to make sure that they get their choice of the two remaining uh, outside there. So that could be the scenario where uh, the Vikings could potentially move up, but that would obviously be a, a draft day decision. Hmm. Uh, in addition, Mayo could also choose to stay with the quarterbacks he already has on the rooster as he expressed confidence in the ability of newly acquired uh, Jabroni Brisket uh, back for the first time. Hmm. Uh, to actually, actually, back for the second time, isn't he? Hmm. Uh, to lead the offense of the Patriots, don't find their man through the draft. The 2016 Patriots draft pick has wound his way through the league over eight years with five teams before finding his way back to Foxborough. A guy like Jacoby, he's a great leader. Everyone loves him. To get back in the building is definitely helpful for us, uh, Mayo said. And honestly, look, he could absolutely be our starter this year. We'll have to see. Uh, like I said, we're not dead. Uh, set out taking a quarterback at number three, uh, but we do feel good about a guy like Jacoby ready to go. So basically, that that's just code. I mean, Gerard Mayo, Elliot Wolf, and that's just throwing chum out in the water. It's like, hey, we don't know if we're going to take a quarterback at three. So, hey, Vikings, get your bids in. Hey, Giants, get your bids in. Maybe even Broncos, get your bids in. Uh, it's certainly a possibility, man. But uh, the whole thing about it is that I, I think three is the most likely place where the Vikings end up uh, if and when they do end up trading up. I, I think that 
two is probably outside. Uh, I think that Washington, new GM Adam Peters, I think just reading between the lines of what Peters as well as uh, new head coach Dan Quinn has said, I think that they're you know, locked in at quarterback because they, they do have a choice. Now, outside of Caleb Williams, they, they have their pick of the quarterbacks. And, you know, three on down, like everything else is contingent where – the Patriots may not have their quarterback choice on the board, and maybe they don't want to settle. Maybe they want to trade down. Uh, Arizona seems locked in with Kyler. Uh, Chargers allegedly are locked in with Herbert. So uh, I think three uh, is the spot for the Vikings to be where they can't be boxed out by the Giants or the Broncos, and uh, they uh, potentially have their choice of the two remaining quarterbacks. Now, what can the Vikings offer? And, uh, again, is there already an offer in place? I actually do think that there are you know, back, uh, back of the envelope uh, wink, nudge, handshake agreements uh, in, in the back pocket. But uh, the Vikings, they have seven. Siete, uh, day three selections on top of the two first-round picks. Uh, two-fourths, two-fifths, one-six, and two-seven. So, you know, they can, they, they can do some damage piling up some of these uh, picks, and hopefully they can stave off uh, giving up the 2025 first-round pick, especially since the Vikings don't have a 2025 second-round pick. So here's what offer could be now could the 2025 first round pick be a non-negotiable for new england certainly could see that but the vikings having a plethora of day three selections could really sweeten this thing up so on top of 11 23 uh the vikings can offer one of the fourths 129 one of the fifths 167 and one of the sevens 232 as well as the 2025 third round pick and if things hold up potentially uh the vikings could have two additional third round uh picks uh through free agency uh, compensatory picks next year so uh the vikings would have their, their first which would be key. Uh, no second because that was part of the Texans trade, uh, and then two thirds. So giving up their their own twenty twenty five third may not be as uh, damaging a, as it could be. All right, and also you, you don't even touch the twenty twenty six picks, which also would be huge. But you know, like we said, uh, a four five seven or four five six ain't that bad since the Vikings have two fours, two fifths, and, and two seven. So would that be enough to get up there? I mean, trade chart says overwhelmingly yes, but. You know, of course, uh, you know, the leverage is in New England's court uh, at this point in time. But also, I have this wild fantasy. is like, hey, maybe Washington, Arizona, and the Chargers really want to move down. And the three of them are bidding uh, against each other to just driving down that price. So, uh, hell, maybe the Vikings can get back like a third-round pick uh, on top of three, four, or five uh, in exchange for only 11 and 23. A guy can dream, right? C- certainly can. But... You know, could could the Vikings uh, definitely get something done with the Patriots? Yes, uh, I think so. But will it get done before the draft? I think if it gets done before the draft, the Vikings will have to make an absolute knockout sweetheart deal. Uh, as we're you know a, a month plus uh, away, so I mean it's a deadline driven league. I mean the, there's nothing else going on between now and then. But also is a spot where it, 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 if our theory is correct where hey if they really are in on one guy and if he goes to Washington then all of a sudden that trade down seems a lot more uh, seems a lot more appetizing maybe that's the case and maybe we have to wait till draft day to see what the hell happens but either way it's fun but the Vikings have uh, the ammunition the Vikings have the motivation and I think Quasey certainly can get this thing done but are your thoughts on thoughts uh, Gerard Mayo talks about the possibility of trading down from three uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts and his thoughts in the comment section below subscribe for daily Vikings takes once well, worth the work put a little something in the Venmo but to next time Skull Production Value <laughs>